Greetings and salutations. I'm gonna take a little walk around the garden. Took the shrubbery out over here, it was diseased. The broccoli's not happy right now, it's very hot out. But we're getting cool nights, so it's growing. Lettuce supply is dwindling right now. We've been eating a lot of salads and both of the tomato plants have nice flowers on them, growing in size, and put the uh, stakes and tied them back. Thin this out. Bell peppers are gonna get pretty substantial. I left a few of the basil in. For those of you who've been following this, you could see the, the growth. And we're getting a nice handful of strawberries every day. And Samson hears the voice, so he comes running. There's the Samson, growing leaps and bounds, having a ball with his lady friend, Bella Bear. Beautiful, beautiful lettuce. If uh, we remain with the cool nights, I should be able to get an, another round or two of lettuce and keep my fingers crossed on that. So the wildflowers are sprouting in the driveway, sunflowers, wildflower, hummingbird, uh, butterfly attraction. There's the mint that I brought from the other place and purple potatoes that I didn't keep up with bearing. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. They have nice blooms on them too. Just uh, threw him in here. Turks turban squash. Once the other squash start uh, growing a little bit more, he'll be pulled. I don't want any crossing. And the blue better sage is doing well here. The domestic blackberry took nicely, seeing some growth. I put in some of the smaller basils here and ate that lettuce patch. Swiss chard is very happy. And the smaller broccoli plants, rue, and the dinosaur kale that were the smallest ones, still lagging way behind. Not concerned about it. I did a wildflower mix over there up against the, the trailer. Eventually I'm gonna do that planter right here I spoke with the landlord last night. He said he's really trying to get the crew together to come over to take the building down. Can't wait. So, huh, the tiller was back out. So I cleared a bigger area for these domestic blackberries to sprawl. The ones down here, they might be getting too much shade. So fall, they'll be moved up to this sunnier area but I'm happy They're, they did they handled it well hey pretty baby hi handsome boy this dog is so expressive with those eyebrows and he's just such a little love he sticks close by me even when I'm in the uh, garden he could see me through the fence and he just whimpers because he doesn't want to be separated. So this will be really pretty. That hummingbird mix will sprout there. And we have lots of stuff happening over here. The first round of lettuce that I sowed uh, is, is growing nicely here. And these are just new transplants under the cage that I put in. Bachelor buttons, Florence fennel, and the amaranth, the golden amaranth, is coming up. And I had discovered here the other day that this is uh, this had to have fallen out of my seed bag. These are Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. I only wanted to grow one at a time. We'll see if they develop their seed heads at a different rate. And just as I told you, with burying the lettuce seed heads, that lots of sprouts were just going to volunteer from that. So if I want more lettuce from that, that'll have to be thinned. I put the ginger root in here from the aquarium. I set the aquarium up on the south side of the trailer. All ready in place for fall to extend the basil growing season. 
and the watermelon. I'm going to have to fertilize those and I may even move them to a sunnier spot. I thought they would grow fast enough to get to the sun, but I'm not, I'm not seeing that as quickly as I want it. And with watermelon, they don't really enjoy transplanting, so make sure that you, if you're starting them in pots or, or have to move them, that you uh, don't disturb the root base. Same thing with cucumbers. Lots of the wild mix, the wildflower mix all throughout this hay area. I tilled the garden out even further and couldn't keep up with these potatoes either. They were buried. They're coming up. Radishes are coming up nicely. These are a Blue Lake bush bean all throughout here. And I thinned the dragon mix, thinned the crust. Peas are still having a little nitrogen uptake problem. We'll see how that works out. Uh, with that chicken poop I found in the bag, I added that to the compost tea. Radishes coming up really nice. Be able to eat those really quickly here in the next week or so. Beets haven't decided I was going to transplant them. They just may stay there. And some growth on the mustard greens. The wild blackberry. It's a little late in the season to do the transplant. Did it anyway. And most of them took. Even the ones that uh, lost their leaves still have green on the stem. So just as long as I keep them watered, they should be fine. So all along this fence line, wild blackberries. So I was told Definitely the truck is out of here this week. Can't wait. And the landlord also said he'll clean out that shed for me and I could also utilize that. I've been digging away here, getting that out. Pruned a lot more, so that has to be disposed of. And this was a uh, previous burn pile. Looked like it was mostly wood. So I just distributed the ashes over the, uh, the lawn area. I don't really trust it putting it into the, the beds with the edible stuff. And here is that prickly pear cactus. The big one transplanted nicely. There's growth on the pears. And uh, not knowing anything about this plant, I did a little research. The pads are edible as well as the pears. The pears will turn red. They have a kiwi-like flavor, lower in acidity. And each pad can, when it's big, can get up to uh, 16 pairs, 15, 16 pairs on each pad. Also, the seeds can be dried out, ground up, and made into a flower. The Mexicans are fond of that. So, this is all endive here. All these little baby, that I just transplanted these last night. I found another pecan tree and I put some of the squash this is uh, uh, Cheerman old Japanese variety and there's even broccoli raw volunteers in there I don't know if you could see them they're gonna be coming up all over because I've collected most of the seed pods from the broccoli raw and you just can't get them all you know they start dropping and the bigger green along the border is the crest and this whole bed is now arugula and the lemon apple cucumbers will go in this mound right there and then over here in this mound and I just put that so try it, you know, just a crinkle that piece of metal to keep the dogs out of there so yesterday I put in some German foxtail millet in the center and around the outside of this hay I put in some flax seeds. There is Hopi squash in there with some basil plants and mustard greens over there. I finally went and collected that other tub from the woods. 
and my mother-in-law helped me rake up the leaf litter and debris. But my compost bin isn't high enough and it's already filled. So when that uh, building comes down, I'll schlep more of those blocks back there and uh, raise it up. And I could really get to some serious composting. So far, so good. Even with the uh, lack of nutrients, with keeping a steady supply of the compost tea going, uh, the plants are, are doing okay. Not the rapid growth that I'm used to with having the good topsoil and mushroom compost, but I'm delaying the delivery once again, waiting for that building, finances, and then my soil guy um, is actually out of business. So I've been shopping around for that. So the Russian, early Russians are growing a little bit. You can't see them, but down here, Texas hummingbirds, they just started, and all along the front of the a cucumber and tomatoes um, are, it's more Swiss chard sprouting. And I put in, I also put in some cress. Basil with the eggplant. There's a couple eggplants in here and then I sowed more seeds. And it's gonna take a while for the uh, strawberries and onions, the walking onions to sprawl out. So I went ahead and put in some of the baby endives because when we get over to that bed you'll see the madness and here we have the albino uh, sweet bell pepper and the tomatoes doing nicely all the tomatoes are doing nicely especially these um, these uh, yellow variety that's a gold ball and and a banana Russian heart-shaped yellow medium-sized tomato beautiful beautiful specimen and this is the yellow pear there's borage growing in between and that's a good companion plant the borage is good for tomatoes and strawberries they like the same kind of soil conditions and they attract the uh, insects and this is the Siamese dragon mix onion same thing with the endive and here's the mature endive that's bolting. And there's all my sprout endive in the middle, which has already been thinned. And there's still way more to do. Same thing with the arugula bed. Lots of thinning to do. Big, beautiful tomatoes. Kohlrabi looking great. New Zealand spinach. And the uh, Swiss chard is all popping, as well as all of the squash variety are showing now. Two of these mounds will be taken out totally and two left behind because the, some of the varieties of squash that I'm growing are just enormous. And there's the second sowing of the French breakfast. And then I went with the Minoways radish. It's one of the most heat tolerant. So I figured I'd give it a try. It's old seed. We'll see, I don't know. But I'm learning uh, that my germination rate on the seeds that I've been producing is a lot higher than the seed companies. So I have to cut back, plant more of the seed company seeds and less of mine. Lots of broccoli, Rob. The cardoon has sprouted. And uh, if you hadn't watched the previous video on the cardoon, it's a very prehistoric plant, artichoke looking. Very interesting. Uh, it, it looks like it's just some kind of crazy ornamental. And okra sprouting, the winged dragon beans. Some of them are up. And lots and lots of all the medicinal flowers and um, herbs are up. I put lots more in pots too. I put more lettuce back here sunflowers and there's the Thai edible gourds are up as well and they um, you'll get to see how quick they grow they're just insane if any of you are familiar with uh, Virginia creeper it's a lot like that where you could actually see the growth from day to day and there's a little dill bed I splash dill everywhere I splash the Florence fennel and a lot of places the wildflower mix echinacea cone flowers, 
Swiss chard is just everywhere. And then because those amaranth were, uh, were accidentally put in the ground, I decided to put a row of them back here. And this will just make for a very tall, dramatic um, backdrop to the garden up against the green of the wooded area. They're gonna get about six, seven feet tall and the whole thing is just gonna be vibrant and especially the blooms, just this unbelievably deep red. So there's the Swiss chard. It's taken a beating. I had no idea that the dogs would wanna travel through the pots. You know, I just figured they would walk around them, but now this is like a regular uh, highway system for them. So they are just taking, taking its toll on these poor guys, so I'll probably have to move them in. Okay, and here's an experiment. I had started this over at my last place, and the carrots, these are store-bought organic carrots, and I loosen that soil up really nicely. I pick the nicest carrots, no splits, nice size, and I, you know, put them down into the soil. They will grow uh, and produce seed. We were just getting to that point at the last place uh, where I was doing the homesteading project, and uh, they were just starting to get their seed pods, and I never got to test the viability germination rate. I did the same thing with a couple of the yellow organic onions and they'll sprout and produce flowers as well. Biennials. You know, the annuals produce the seed at the end of the season. Biennials grow, then you have to replant them and then they produce seed. It's like that with, um, with quite a few of these. And normally I just don't mess with them, but I figured I'd give it a shot. All right, I think I covered it all on the progress. And when I start doing more of the herb planting and I'll get back, you know, with why I'm putting them in and, you know, their purpose and why I choose the locations that I do. Oh, I also wanted to mention I ordered tea seeds from actual tea bushes. So when you, if you decide to order those, uh, you have to put them in the ground immediately. So 10 of those seeds were just purchased online. Nine of them were full and viable. One was empty. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on the germination rate of those and how everything goes there. I'll show you uh, as the closing, I'll show you how tall the bolt is on the lettuce varieties and they're just getting going. They should go up another, at least another foot or two before the flowers start to show up. All right, hope you're well. Hope things are going your way in your garden, in your life, doing what you like to do, having fun. And I'll be back with more later. Love you, bye.